you play football manager, I play football manager. Is there a better feeling than when you sit down for an evening session of the game and you just win every match? It's a good feeling, isn't it? Well, today, I've not had that feeling. We have been disastrous since you were last here. I've won one league game in my last five, and today, I have to take on AC Milan. Not looking forward to this. Yes, folks, how is it going? And welcome back to Arsenal. Today, we have the Europa League knockout. It is the round of 16. We're taking on AC Milan. Not the easiest game in the world. Definitely going to be a test for us. Now, last episode, we did have a transfer special. If you didn't see it, do go check it out. Three new additions to the squad. Mukiele was one player. He's had a good little start to time at the club. However, I signed him to play right back. And I'm struggling to justify playing him there because Tommy Yasu has decided he is the world's greatest right back. I don't know what's happened. He got a hat-trick of assists against Newcastle, and he's not been the same since. The man is playing confidently, and somehow, someway, now, he has the highest average rating in the entire squad. I was talking about replacing him a few months ago. At the moment, I'm practically worshipping him. Or maybe I'm just blowing out of proportion how good he's been because of how bad the rest of the squad have been. Look at this form. Let's talk about it. Let's start with a positive as well. We beat Fulham 4-0. That was a nice result. Saka scored early on. As you can see in the second half, a whole flurry of goals. And actually, I'm going to show you the final goal scored here. This was the nail in the coffin. Emil Smith-Rowe, goal of the season contender. I think so. Now that win against Fulham capped off what had been a superb run of form and beaten in January started February strongly and then it came to a rather abrupt halt. We didn't win any of our three remaining games for the month. The first of these, the only defeat, 1-0 against Wolves. Look at the XG. Look at the XG. And now, feast your eyes on how they scored their goal in this game. This was, of course, to ruin our runner form. And to be fair, I feel like this 1-0 defeat has kind of just left us in a bit of a mess. So we lost against Wolves, and I somewhat put it down to just players being a bit tired. For maybe I just need to rotate the team. Play the B team, you know, get some fresh legs onto the pitch. We took on bottom of the table Nottingham Forest. We drew nil-nil. We just, we, we couldn't find the back of the net. I mean, Enketia started. He got a 6.2. I should have sold him in January. To end the month of February, we took on Southampton. A 2-2 draw here. Of course, a team who gave us a pretty good run for our money when we took them on previously at the start of the season. They had four shots on target. Two of them went in. They scored in the 88th minute. I don't want to dwell on these games too much. A little bit of good news, though. We demolished Stoke in the FA Cup. We beat Sheffield United 8-0 in this previously. We then beat Stoke 5-1. A good performance. Gabriel Jesus got an 8.0. Saliba on an 8.1. Tommy Asu had a good game. Andreas and Vieira also chipping in with meaningful goal contributions. And finally, in our most recent game... Crystal Palace beat us 2-0. Eze scored a free kick. That goal was kind of nice. The next goal by Eduard, I think, might have been even better. The man picked it up miles away from goal and just unleashed a cannon. Made it 2-0. We couldn't score. If you don't score, you don't win football matches. And despite arguably being the better team, we mustered one shot on target from 17 efforts. It can't go this badly again, can it? Now, as much as I might sound a little bit annoyed, salty about that run of games, I can assure you I've played Football Manager long enough to know you go through runs of bad luck. I don't need to panic and change the tactics. Things will come good. Players need to click. I need to hope that clicking happens soon because looking at the Premier League table, a title that was almost completely in our own hands after the win against Man City is, well, slipping away. We are currently two points behind Man City with a game in hand. Unfortunately... Erling Haaland's goal-scoring antics, 30 goals in 28 for them so far this year, are meaning that we need to book up our ideas. We need to start winning games. We can't afford to drop points like we have already. Truth be told, Manchester City had a rough run of form themselves. They've turned that around. We need to do the same. And with that, I'm hoping that the Europa League can be a bit of a galvanizer, something to really rally us. And well, that is why today we are back. We're taking on AC Milan in the first and second leg. They are currently second in Serie A, three points behind Inter Milan, going strong towards the top of the table. Elsewhere, you can see Napoli and Juve right up there. It is a four-horse race in Syria. Of course, around the world of football, seasons have been messed up by the World Cup. Syria is no different, and all of these squads have very intense schedules. As we get further and further into competitions like the FA Cup, like the Europa League, I do fear that injuries are going to become a bigger problem. 
So the good news for us right now, fingers crossed, touch wood, um, everything's fine injury-wise at the moment. Only one player unavailable, that is Cedric, who, well, isn't registered. That's why he's not playing. Besides that, it is pretty much a full-strength 11. You might have noticed Andreas starting out on the left-hand side. With our team's poor runner form, he has been a player who's not been performing amazingly, but compared to Martinelli, he's actually performed significantly better. Since Martinelli's come back from injury, I've given him three appearances in the last four games. He's not really impressed, so I am going to drop him to the bench for today. Elsewhere in the team, it's pretty much a full-strength squad. You might have noticed Barry Arrow slotting in as the ball-winning midfielder. He's been playing for us semi-regularly. Now that I think about it, ever since he joined, we've not been winning. But it's not like we've been conceding a load of goals. We've just not been scoring. Of course, first leg away from home. No away goals in Europe anymore, so we've got that to consider. Also, if you've not seen this yet, look at all these fancy graphics. There's the Milan team. They've got Ibrahimovic up top, because of course they have. In terms of our team, you can see it here. A very, very strong starting 11. 11 options on the bench, including Turner, a goalkeeper. Yeah, um, I feel weird having a goalkeeper on a bench. I never put a goalkeeper on the bench. I'm a reformed man. It turns out, if you give me 12 subs... I will include a goalkeeper. Also, can we discuss these cutscenes? I'll probably end up skipping them a few seasons in. But it's quite nice, isn't it? Can we have more of this just in all competitions, please, SI? Okay, there is a kickoff highlight right away. I don't know if I should be excited or terrified. Of course, we're playing in our away kit here, the black kit, and I'm hoping that we're going to get off to a really, really good start. We've not been good enough. Andreas has been gifted it. Gabriel Jesus should have scored. And he's kicked it straight at the keeper. I'll tell you what, that was a really good chance early on for Jesus to give us the lead. A gifted opportunity, really. Andreas won the ball in a great area. The ball was great. The finish, less so. My nan, of course, a very, very good goalkeeper for Milan. So a player that we know is going to be tricky to beat. I'm hoping it's not going to be one of those games where we have loads of shots and the goalkeeper just ends up being an absolute hero for them. Andreas looking for the overlap of Tierney. Of course, the vice captain was really, really important to us in our win against Man City. He lays it inside to Zinchenko, who's going to dink it towards Saka. He can't quite keep it alive. And now Origi, well, he was looking for someone. I'm not sure who he was looking for. We've won the ball back. Tierney dinks it in. Odegaard's there. And oh my word, the technique on that finish on the volley. He did a goal like that, didn't he, against Sheffield United last episode. He's done it again here on a slightly bigger stage. The Milan are faithful. They're going to have their hands in their heads or their, their heads in their hands. I mean, they could have their hands in their heads just like this. Um, look, it's 1-0. It's a great start. It's a great finish. We will take that. Set piece for Milan. Benesser going to whip the ball back post. Origi's there. And Ramsdale is in no man's land. He looked flat-footed. He didn't read the cross. We didn't defend the set-piece all that well. Origi, of course, a big, meaty man. And to be fair, Milan have got some really good players in the air. We've got to be wary of them from set-pieces. You've got players like Tomori, Origi, even Ibrahimovic. And, uh, well, it's one of them that's got them immediately back into this game. We were ahead for less than 10 minutes. Five minutes left of the half. It's been an interesting half with not a whole lot of chances, to be honest. Both teams have taken opportunities, and it looks like at the break, it's all going to be square. Considering we're away from home, I'm pleased with this performance. We started well. Milan, I don't know, they've kind of grown into this game in the middle bit, and then since they scored, they've done absolutely nothing, whereas we've continued to create bits I don't want to overhaul things just yet, but Gabriel Jesus on a 6.4 has to be slightly concerning. Saliba on a booking does have me scared. As of late, I have been playing Saliba over Ben White. On paper, Ben White's probably a better player, but his recent form has just been very meh. But with the risk of a sending off, I don't really want to risk it. Elsewhere, Barriero's not had the best of games for us. I'm going to take him off and bring in Partey. Um, elsewhere... Gabriel Jesus, and if I was, you know, in a different timeline where I had another striker to bring on, I'd probably take him off on a 6.3. But we simply put, don't have an option. I know what you're sat thinking, Jack, what about Graziano Pelle, the, the Italian bloke you signed? I forgot to mention it last episode. Um, we sold him. He's playing in Austria, but we did make profit. So as far as I'm concerned, fantastic signing. Although maybe, just maybe, right now... He could have actually been useful. Okay, coming up to 20 minutes left in this game, I'm going to make some changes, I think. Looking at the squad, Jesus has had such a poor game, I'm actually going to bring in Martinelli to play as a striker. Elsewhere, Saka's been quiet, we're going to bring in Fabio Vieira, and I do have one last sub, Zinchenko, off you come, Andre Santos, on you come, my favourite player in this squad. Let's see if he can make something magical happen from midfield. 
I suppose there's a temptation in a game like this with 10 minutes left to go more attacking. But given the fact this is the first leg, the game's very much in the balance. I back us in the second leg in a week's time to beat Milan at home. So I don't want to go too crazy here. At the end of the day, I think 1-1 is probably a fair reflection of how this game's played out. A lack of quality, but another set piece for us to deal with on my work. Can you imagine if they'd scored another? Rebic heads it just over. Surely that's going to be all she wrote for the game. I'm going to issue a shout of calm down to the players. As much for myself as for them. We all need to calm down here. Ball's going to be whipped in. Ramsdale collects it. Game, can we just end things? I don't know why I've been shown this. I feel like the game is trying to mess with me a little bit. And uh, well, with, with it, it is full time. It's 1-1. It's hardly been a classic. In the second half, I think Milan were perhaps the better team. But 1-1... Going into the home leg, under other circumstances, I'd be more confident. Given our recent form, I don't know what to think of that. Liverpool won 6-2 against Union Berlin. Nunes scored 6, because of, of course Nunes scored 6. 1-1, one, one, hardly a classic. Hopefully the second leg can live up to a slightly higher standard. Of course, as I've already mentioned, we've got West Ham midweek. They are currently fourth, but they are some way off the pace. A game that I expect us to win, we should win. When I come back, I'm either going to have a massive smile or look really sad, and you'll know what's happened. I know what you're thinking, Jack, that this smile, too big. You're exaggerating. It can't have gone that well. Well, look, we, we won 1-0, but Man City also lost 1-0 at the same time. With that result, we go top of the league. It wasn't a classic. We limited West Ham really well and defended superbly. I'm just relieved we actually scored a goal, even if we had an XG far superior, even if we missed a penalty, even if we had a goal ruled out, we got three points. I'm relieved about that. And is there any better feeling than when the players that link up to score you the goal are players that you've subbed on? You feel like you've actually had an impact on this game. Saka and Mill Smith Rowe linking up not for the first time this season. They grabbed us the goal. Oh, it's good to be back. I mean, maybe I'm getting slightly carried away. We've still got to play Milan here. If we lose to them, are we truly back? Not really. Um, what I will say is, as you've already seen, we are back top of the Premier League. With 10 games left, this could actually happen. Last episode, I mentioned the possibility of a youth intake in today's episode. It's not arrived yet. It does arrive in March, so we'll tack that onto the end of this episode whenever it arrives. So going into this game against Milan, Saka is going to start on the bench. Despite his goal against West Ham, I'm going to go with Vieira. Elsewhere, Andreas holds down his spot on the left-hand side. This a selection choice basically made off form. When you look at the players' form for their five most recent games... It's not that good for the majority of our players. And a lot of the players higher up this list, the likes of, I suppose, El Nenny, uh, Dia Kaibi, Reese Nelson, they are players who've got really high ratings in FA Cup matches that don't really matter. The reality is that the vast majority of our team are in bad form. And I think at this point, it's about dropping players and rotating players. The one player who I can't drop for this game that I kind of wish I could is Jesus, because he has just been awful lately no goal in his last three games obviously last match against Milan we took him off after 62 minutes if you thought that was bad he got a 6.0 rating against West Ham midweek before I took him off I've criticized him for his recent form I need Jesus back or we are not going to win the Europa League and we're not going to win the Premier League Elsewhere, though, the team looks rather unchanged. I have decided to drop Zinchenko for this match just because his form's not been so good. Andre Santos is going to start for us here. He's been developing well. He's been training well. Hopefully, he's going to be able to put it together on the pitch as he starts alongside Partey. Okay, here we are at the Emirates. A big game for us. 1-1 one, one after the first leg. Away goals aren't a factor. We could have extra time and penalties if needed, but I want to believe at home with our squad... We are more than capable of grinding out a win here. Should I be concerned that 10 minutes in, Gabrielle's picked up a booking? Maybe. Halfway through the first half, we've not had a shot on target yet. Now there's a set piece. These scare me. They scored one against us last time, but we've dealt with it well. Fabio Vieira bringing the ball forward. I'll tell you what, we could catch them on the break here. Vieira gives it to Partey. Really, really nice ball. He hits it from range. That is not too bad of an effort. It's his second goal of the season. Vieira and Partey, two players who have been in and out of the team, part of kind of the rotation policy. They link up and it is an incisive breakaway, a fantastic finish. And well, that could be the goal that puts us through. Although there is still 68 more minutes of this game. Let's not get carried away just yet. I think we might need a goal or two more today. 
Calabria with the ball. Gives inside to Pabega. Milan have actually been building up a little bit of pressure here. They've had a couple of chances as of late, and they've got one here. Teo Hernandez gives it down the line to Origi. The goal scorer previously plays it inside, and Zlatan Ibrahimovic makes it 1-1. That lead didn't last very long, did it? Um, yeah, how old is Ibrahimovic? This man is 41 years old. He's just scored against me. He's actually ridiculous, isn't he? Oh my, what, he's actually insane. Well, hmm, he scored against us, it's 1-1. With 10 minutes left of the half, I don't want to panic too much. We've been on top in this game. They've had one shot on target, it's gone in. And now we've got a set piece. Andreas is going to put it in. Tamori heads it away. Vieira keeps it alive, though, and keeps it in a dangerous area. Andreas cuts inside, hits it, and Tamori heads that off the line. That was ridiculous. Oh, my word. Okay, pressure is mounting. We are having chance after chance after chance, but we need to find a breakthrough. Andre Santos has got Tierney down the line. He gives it back to his, well, partner in crime in Gabriel, who's on that yellow card, does need to be sensible, gives away the ball to Pabega. We could be in a world of hurt here. Pabega, not the quickest player, lays it inside to CDK. He turns, lays it to Zlatan, who scores again. It's only his seventh goal of the season. He scored two against us today. I don't even know what to say. What do you say? I mean, Gabriel's just given it away in a not good area there. Pabega, he's not broken away with pace, but he's held it up intelligently. CDK, little intricate turn here. Zlatan, with what was it, like six acceleration? He arrives like Usain Bolt on the scene. And he tooks it away. With a minute left, there is a late twist here. A goal here could really change our team talk one way or another. I've got a water bottle in my hand ready. If we concede one, it's getting launched. If we score one, maybe I'll be more reasonable in our team talk. Fabio Vieira wins back the ball again. He is putting in a Terrier-like performance. I feel like on this near side, he's been working hard to win it and he's done so again there. Tommy Yasu, Fabio Vieira, I've been singing his praises and I will sing them that little bit more. Goal number 12 for him. I think that was on his weaker right foot. A finish into the top bins. Keeper could not get there and while my nanny's a good goalkeeper, um, but <laughs> I don't think any goalkeepers get in there. It was held up superbly. It all came from Fabio Vieira winning the ball and from a near impossible angle. He finds the top corner. Absolutely ridiculous. The water bottle, I'm going to put it down. I'm calm. It's 3-3 three, three on aggregate here. No water bottle going to be thrown, but I am going to point my finger really aggressively. I'm not happy with your performances out there. Sometimes you've just got to do a little finger point. Makes me feel better doing it. Maybe I should do this more often. Get some anger out. Where's my stress ball? 10 minutes into this half, I'm going to make some changes. Jesus is on a 6.3. I've got to take him off here. I'm going to bring in Martinelli at striker. Elsewhere, Vieira and Odegaard are having good games. Andreas, less so. I'm going to play him out on the left-hand side, uh, Saka. And I'm going to make, well, a double change in the final third. We're going to need another goal to avoid extra time. I would quite like to do that if possible because... The last thing our squad needs with the current schedule is extra time. We've got lots of matches to play. With 25 minutes left, though, we've been on top for large spells of this game. We've had more of the ball. We've had more shots. Milan have been very incisive in taking their chances that have come. Partey's having a great game, but he is on a booking. Andre Santos, slightly less so. I'm going to take him off and bring in Barriero and then move Barriero to the ball-winning midfielder role just to hopefully allow Partey, well, the ability to ease off tackles that little bit more. Elsewhere, Odegaard's playing well, but is looking tired. I'm kind of tempted to take him off. Uh, the question is, who would I bring on? And I think the answer to that question is, I'd bring in Zinchenko to play on the right-hand side as an inverted winger, cutting in on his left foot. Bit of an unorthodox change, perhaps. But yeah, I feel like we need to change things around. Vieira's played well. Keen to see how he can maybe do through the middle for us. As with 10 minutes left, not been a goal. There's been nothing. We've got tired legs. We've brought in fresh legs in the final third. Can we find a breakthrough late on here? Doesn't feel like it. I think we're going to extra time. Unless... No, we're, go we're going to extra time. I went and got my, my stress ball. It matches the lighting as well, doesn't it? Okay. So extra time we go. Are you calm? I'm not. Kickoff highlight in extra time. Ibrahimovic is still on the pitch, by the way. 41 years old, and the man's going to be playing over 90 minutes of football. Fair play to him. I couldn't manage 90 minutes, and I'm in my prime, arguably. I think my, my prime was about 10 years ago, to be fair. But uh, nevertheless, maybe we can turn things around here. Tierney wins the header. Saka, Partey with the ball. I feel like today's commentary has been off the rails. The stress has got to me. Martinelli can't get there. Saka, though, will do. Can he make something happen? He's going to be on his stronger left foot to put the ball in. 
He and, uh, well, Vieira have a little bit of interplay. It falls to Tierney, who's going to cut inside and hit it just over the crossbar. Benes uh, with the ball, plays it to Alessi. Chaka now with it. Ibrahimovic through the middle. He's actually scored a hat trick. He's actually, he's actually scored a hat trick. He's actually scored a hat trick. Well, get the stress ball. Get the, I mean, what do you say? They've, they've not had that many chances, but every single one that has come their way, they finished. And Ibrahimovic, so it turns out he's quite good at football. I mean, they've had five shots on target and scored three of them. Ramsdale's on a 6.2. That man was at the World Cup with England. He had the most clean sheets of the World Cup. Can, can I just give him an England kit to play in? Are we allowed to do that? Can he play in an England kit at club level? Maybe that would make him play better. I mean, we're going into the second half of extra time here. I've got to throw men forward. We're going to have to go to the 4-2-4 system. And, uh, well, we have got one final change. I'm going to bring in Nketiah. I'm going to bring him in for Partey, who had a great game, scored what feels like a lifetime ago. We're going to go with the two-striker setup. Are we even going to be able to create anything? Five minutes left. I'm going to tell the players to get even more direct. Hit early crosses, play into space. In transition, distribute it quickly over the top. Get stuck in, he's already on. Step up more, close down, just, just make stuff happen, please. There's five minutes to just try and force a highlight, it feels like. Fabio Vieira, free kick. Hit from range, he hits the crossbar. There's two minutes left. Did the keeper save that? I don't know how much time there's left here. I've got desperate. We've, we've got to just do one last change. Vieira through the middle. Barriero play at the back. Tierney. Tommy Asu, just, just go forward. Martinelli, just advance forward as well. Is there, is there any time for anything? Anything at all? No, we've just been knocked out the Europa League, not even in the quarterfinals. This is the round of 16. This is embarrassing. I have to say, when you look at the overall story of the match, we have been blooming unlucky, haven't we? They had one shot in the entirety of extra time. And Ibrahimovic scored it. He's got man of the match. He's, he's not scored in two Europa League performances before today. I feel sick. Call it an overreaction. I'm throwing the water bottle. They can look stressed. They can lose confidence. I don't give a scooby-doo. I've lost confidence in them. We've been humiliated. Now, I will say ahead of the game, the fan vote happened and Milan were actually voted favourites to win the game. So I'm going to claim that we were the plucky underdog that came short. But obviously, that isn't the reality of it whatsoever. I guess if we want to look at a tiny positive, next year we should be in the Champions League. So we can't lose in the Europa League again. OK, you know what? Not ideal, let's be honest. But at least we've got the youth intake to look forward to. I'm going to play forward to that. I have got Chelsea in the FA Cup imminently. I'm not going to do that in an episode just because we've played a lot of games as of late and the season's a bit weird. This is going to be a multiple season save. I feel like if we were to stop for FA Cup quarterfinals, we wouldn't finish a season before the bait is over. But I want to see what youth players we get. Maybe that can cheer me up. Okay, it turns out we didn't have to wait long. Only a day later, youth intake is here. I feel happy. I can see lots of big star ratings. Shall we have a look at the best of the bunch? Paul Brown. Here he is, 15 years old, quick winger, mega inconsistent, the heading ability of a goldfish. That's right, he's got one heading. He's uh, actually got a really good right foot as well as left foot. So as a possible player, he could play out in the wide areas. I like the look of him. I will say he doesn't wow me compared to what I thought the star right ratings might do for me. Elsewhere, Will King, an Australian, five-star potential, centre mid. How good is he? I mean, I'll tell you what, he's a very, very good technical player. His physicals are awful. If you thought we had a player with a heading of a goldfish, we also have got a player with the jumping of a goldfish. Will King, one jumping reach. He's 168 centimetres tall. He's going to be our short king. See what I did there with the whole short king thing? Because his name's Will King. Oh, no, genius. A couple of other players of note. We've got Jason Harvey here, who is a Barbadian goalkeeper at 15 years old. He looks okay, I suppose. He's very eccentric, which isn't necessarily a good thing, especially with 15 tendencies to rush out. That could be a terrifying combo. Ian Chalmers here actually looks better than some of the other players we've looked at. He is unfortunately inconsistent, but he's a player with some good potential, very well-rounded, professional personality I like a lot. We've got Sergei Budé here, who is a Belarusian player. Bit of an interesting combo. Injury-prone, inconsistent, lacks bravery. But let's look at the positives. 
He can play a couple of positions, so ignore all the negatives. And I'll tell you what, the list of top talents goes on. We've got Dave Kearns here, big old Dave. He looks interesting. He actually looks like he has the polygon of a wingback. Am I going crazy? You can tell me. I don't think he'd be the worst wingback in the world. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced. I think he could be good there. And you could say with the last of the top talents, I've left Sir Best for last. I probably deserve to get knocked out the Europa League. Here we've got Firat Sebest. He is a Turkish forward who actually looks really, really good. He's a very, very complete player. Could improve in the future. 15 determination. One leadership. Ignore that. Everything else is great about him. A few interesting players in the intake. No one with crazy current ability, but maybe some with potential that if we nurture, we can get a lot out of. Um, I don't know if that was the super high note I wanted to end today's episode on, but I, I guess it's better than just conceding a hat-trick against Ibrahimovic and then ending the episode. I mean, gang, let's be honest, it's not been a great first season at Arsenal from a European perspective. Having gone and beaten in the group, we've got knocked out in the first knockout round. Silver lining, less games to worry about. And now, full focus on the Premier League and FA Cup. Speaking of which, next episode, we've got Tottenham. They're currently in fourth. We play them on the 15th of April. That is when we're going to be back. I hope you are ready. I feel like today's episode had a lot of chaotic energy, but I hope you were able to enjoy it. Have a lovely rest of your day. We're back again tomorrow for more. Until then, take it easy. It's me, Jack, and I'll see you for the North London Derby tomorrow.